Hello. Let's have a study lesson or conversation about the two houses of Israel or the two olive trees and then grafting into one the branches and the root. <clears throat> First of all, before we get too deep into it, let's look at some uh, definitions. Look up the definitions of a few of these words. And uh, the Gentiles, um, or the Gaium, uh, which is a plural form of Gai, uh, meaning Gaium, or Gaium, in the plural form means uh, uh, people or you know peoples uh, the word means actually means nation or nations okay uh, they often are referring to the foreigners uh, we are commissioned to teach the name of Yahuwah and his covenant to those responding will engraft into Israel by pledging themselves to the covenant through water immersion. Then they are to be treated the same as native born. There's no dividing wall. There's only one Torah, and that Torah applies to all. So the Gentile simply means nations or people that are outside of the covenant at the present time. Uh, the Hebrews, the Hebrew word is, you know, not necessarily speaking of a race of any sorts. It's really more of a language. It's a language that was named for uh, Eber. Uh, Hebrew, the word Hebrew itself means over. Some say it means cross over, but it really just simply means over. Um, this is what is called the Lashon Kodesh, or set apart tongue, which will be restored during the seventh millennium reign of Yahusha. You can read um, Sephania 3 9. The word comes from. Abraham's great 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 grandfather Eber. It was the language our rabbi spoke to Shaul or Paul when he was thrown to the ground. In Acts 26, Paul explains to Agrippa that he heard a voice speaking to him in Hebrew. Actually, that's the only language Yehudim spoke to each other except for those who were living in foreign lands or were in the dispersion so hebrew really is not a specific race but it's a it's a specific group of people speaking that language okay of hebrew it's a language not really a race uh and so Israel, or Yisrael, uh, means uh, ruler with Elohim. Shar, that's in the word Yisharel, okay, is the root word which means rule. So Shar means rule. Uh, Yisrael, the whole word, means prince or ruler. Uh, it's the letter Y is a prefix meaning to, and the suffix AL at the end refers to Allahim, all. So you see that all. The meaning is, the full meaning is to rule with Allahim, to rule with Allahim, or prince ruling with Allahim. Uh, many define it as to struggle or wrestle with Elohim, um, to contend or to fight or to wrestle with Elohim.
some said to define Israel that way. Uh, this elect group, Israel, is often referred to in Scripture as the bride or the Asha of Yahuwah, the one body in covenant with him. So here we find out that the Gentiles are the people that are outside of the covenant, okay, with Yahuwah, and Israel refers to a group of people that are in the covenant with Yahuwah. So the, the uh, Gentiles or foreigners that are outside of the covenant must become engrafted. So they must engraft into Israel or join, become in, partakers or uh, become in the covenant. They have to come into the covenant, okay, or perish without hope. If you have to be in the covenant or you're going to perish without hope. Uh, those engrafted are to be treated as the native born. So once somebody comes into the covenant, you're supposed to treat them as though they have always been in the covenant. They're part of the family and, and basically can't shun them, ignore them, um, treat them disrespectfully, uh, show part, uh, partiality. Uh, toward others that have been, have been in the covenant longer, that you know better, that's a sin. You can't do that. Ruth did this. Ruth engrafted into Israel, being a former Moabite, and became the great grandmother of King David. In name, and she is named in the gene, genealogy of Yahusha. All who accept the renewed covenant through the covering of Yahushua's blood must be immersed, water immersed, as the outward sign of their pledge, committing themselves to uh, the, the uh, statues and the commands of Yahuwah, to be obedient to Yahuwah's commands. So the water immersion being the outward sign of their pledge, you know, or their oath, okay, to enter into the covenant with Yahuwah. Okay? So that means that, that's, you know, that you're entering into the covenant when you go to the water. That's what you're getting ready to do. This seals them as Yahushua's elect for the day of our redemption. By learning Yahuwah's covenant of love, which is the Ten Commandments, every person is convicted of transgressing his instructions. Yahushua's perfect offering of his own blood redeems completely. There remains no more offering for sins. The handwriting that was against us is wiped clean. The handwriting is the list of our sins that was against us. The law, the Torah was not against us. It was our sins or our transgressions that was against us. Uh, so these sins are forgotten and his blood redeems us through the process of being convicted in our heart that we need him, we repent or turn back to Yahuwah and pledge to obey Yahuwah's instructions in his power as we call on the name of deliverance for the forgiveness of sins. So it's his righteousness in us. Okay? Not our righteousness that saves us. Yahusha uh, is the indwells us. And so since he's in us, his righteousness, okay, is what gives us the power and um, the right to uh, be delivered, okay? Um, Yahushua is our rock and our redeemer, okay? He's our deliverer. He's the rock that we call on and rely upon. He has become our intercessor, our mediator of the covenant. 
Uh, and so, um, the only other thing really there is that, uh, uh, you know, Jacob, and when he wrestled with Elohim, uh, he was renamed Israel. Okay, that's where the name actually came from. And that's why a lot of people, uh, even scripture itself says that uh, uh, he's called that because he wrestled with Elohim or saw Elohim and lived. He actually lived. So um, we can read about that in, um, in Genesis. It's in Genesis uh, 32, and verse 28. It says, And he said, Your name is no longer Yaqub, or Jacob, but Yisrael, Yisrael, okay, Yisrael, because you have striven or wrestled with Elohim and with men and have overcome. I mean, you survived it, you lived, but he did, he did come out of it with crippled with a busted up hip. He limped for the rest of his life. And Jacob asked him, saying, Please let me know your name. And he said, Why do you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, which means uh, face of Elohim. For I have seen Elohim face to face, and my life is preserved. That means he lived through it. Okay. Uh, the only other name really is, uh, is Jews or Yehudim, you know, um, and that's one tribe. There's 12 tribes. Yehudim, or the Jews, uh, is just one tribe out of the 12. And uh, it became a separate house, okay, uh, later on. I'm not going to get into that too hard. I will in a little bit. But um, it just simply means, uh, Yehudim means um, worshipers of Yah. Yah's worshipers, or, you know, that's what it really means. Um, hallelujah means praise. Praise you, Yah. You know. So, Yehudim has been, uh, um, you know, incorrectly, or it, it mutated to the word Jew, you know, but it really is, is uh, means Yah. Yehudim, you know, so... Worshippers of Yah, or Yah, Yah's worshippers. Um, so, the point here is, is since there's people that are living outside the covenant, and people who are living inside the covenant, um, then they all have to come into into the same covenant. Okay. And so the ones that are outside have to engraft into the natural tree or the people that are already in the covenant, which is called Israel, because they're in the covenant. They're Yahuwah's people ruling with him. Okay, that's the point there. Uh, so we read that there's two houses. There's a house of Israel, and there's a house of Judah, or Yehuda. Okay, uh, the house of Israel are basically the lost sheep, or the ones that are outside, living outside of the covenant. Okay, so they were run off. Uh, Yahuwah divorced them. They were run off, um, and now um, he's searching for the lost sheep, and he's calling them back into the, the renewed covenant. Okay, so he, although he divorced them, he did not take a new bride, as to speak of, okay, but he has recounseled them back to himself and with a renewed covenant, okay, which is through the blood atonement of Yahusha. And so anyway, the lost sheep are living among the scattered tribes are living among the Gentiles, and they're all scattered. Every, 
I don't know if there's really anybody that knows for sure, you know, that they're from the one of the 12 tribes or not. I mean, maybe with all these DNA tests and everything they have nowadays, maybe they, they can do that. I don't know, but, uh, really they, they were all scattered You know, nobody remained there, you know, uh, even the, uh, the house of Yehuda, you know, they went into, uh, captivity over in Babylon too and other places and they didn't all come back either just a percentage a small percentage of the people came back after the Babylonian captivity so they were all mixed up blood too you know so this kind of uh, goes along with uh, you know him telling Abraham that he would be a father of nations okay so because his blood has been he scattered the, the, that particular blood or flesh out into all the nations and intermingled with all the nations. Those are the lost sheep. Okay. Um, there's several um, ways, I guess, that men are trying to get back into the covenant with Yahusha or Yahuwah. One way they're trying to do it is wrong. It's the wrong way. It's because it's it's man's way. All right. The other way of doing it is the is Yahuwah's way. All right. Um, the way to life is through truth okay the way to the that's going to lead to the second death or the lake of fire is falsehood okay so one of these ways is false and it's going to lead you to the second death and the other way is truth which will lead you in, uh, in the way of life to life so the way to life is through truth. All right. So the wrong way is called replacement theology or supersessionism. Okay. This this way is wrong and it doesn't work because it is simply not truth. It is merely men's way or men's teaching and the underwriters of this replacement theology or this wrong way to seek deliverance is probably Hashatan himself the devil and his demons they're the underwriters the replacement theology they hate uh, Yahuwah's people okay um, so, how do we become Israel? How do we engraft into Israel or enter into the covenant? Okay, with the other people that are already in the covenant. Um, so this is this is what we want to get focused on because this is what's what's mostly the most important. Uh, but uh, before we get going into that too deeply, uh, let's take a look at uh, a, little, a little bit of history here. And one thing I'd like to say is, if you haven't got this book yet, you should get it. It's not perfect, but man, it really helps out a lot. You can buy this off of the Torah Zone. I think it's even on Amazon. There's the author right there. Very cool book. But basically, on in the introduction, it says, This study will take you from Genesis to Revelations to show the future restoration of the two houses of Israel into one united kingdom under Messiah in the millennium reign. 
the restoring of all things is a major theme that pre-meets uh, uh, the scriptures and will be studied in detail here in this book. The church world has done a wonderful job preaching redemption by the blood of Messiah, but a very poor job on one of the main reasons the Messiah came. And that is the restoration of a reunified Israel back into their land and under one king, Yahuwah, Yahusha, the Messiah. The church also gets a failing grade for their understanding and handling of the law, or the Torah, which means instructions. Why is this important? It's important because it involves you as a believer in Mashiach. It is vital that you understand who you are. If you are a Gentile and follow a Jewish Messiah, you are likely a descendant of the house of Israel, one of the lost sheep. Most Christians fall into this category, but few know it. They are, in all probability, Israelites who have forgotten their true identity. Think of the implications. It will not be easy and will require study on your part, but it is worthwhile. According to the Apostle Paul, if you're saved, you become an Israelite by engrafting into the natural olive tree of Israel. That means into the covenant. The renewed covenant, or otherwise known as the New Testament by some folks, is made only with the house of Israel in the house of Yehuda. You can read Jeremiah 31, 31 and Hebrews 8, 8. The covenant is not with anyone else but Israel. Israel is to be a people unto Yahuwah forever. Read 2 Samuel 7, 24. Yahuwah only has one chosen people, and that is Israel. The church is not a separate entity and does not replace Israel. That's what replacement theology teaches, that the church is the new Israel. That's falsehood. When a person becomes born again or enters the covenant, they are engrafted into the olive tree of Israel. So the olive tree is Israel, Israel or Israel. If they are not grafted in, they are not Yahuwah's people. That means you're not saved or delivered. The Jews have to come the same way. Ah, I'm going to hit on that a little bit more too later on. So the Jews, or the, the people who per perceive to be Yehudim, you know, have to come to, into the covenant the same way. That's interesting. So they don't get an automatic free ticket in. It's not free admit. They don't hand out free admission tickets to if you're a Jew. So your inheritance isn't going to let get you into the covenant. Uh, and although they have been broken off, they are grafted back in to the olive. Uh, they can be grafted back into the olive tree also. Uh, the bride of the Messiah is Israel, and none other. No church, no religion, none of that. Okay, it's Israel. The house of Yehuda and the house of Israel, otherwise known as Ephraim, are called a green olive tree. You can read that in Jeremiah eleven sixteen. References to the regathering of Israel in Scripture are numerous, so it can easily this can easily be proven. All you gotta do is open up your mind and your heart to the truth. So uh, it's all pretty interesting. Let's get into some Scripture about this and uh, go from there. Um. We, let's go to Jeremiah 3, verse 1. 
verse 6. It says, And Yahuwah said to me in the days of Yash, Yashiyahu the sovereign, Yash, Yashiyahu the sovereign or king, have you seen what backsliding Israel has done? She has gone up on every high mountain and under every green tree, and there committed whoring. And after she had done all these, I said, Return to me. But she did not return. And her treacherous sister, Yehuda, saw it. And I saw that for all the causes for which backsliding Israel had broken wedlock, I had put her away and given her a certificate of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister, Yehuda, did not fear but went and committed whoring too. And it came to be through her uh, fervulous whoring that she defiled the land and broke wedlock with stones and wood. Idolatry. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Yehuda has not turned to me with all her heart, but falsely, declares Yehuda. And Yehuda said to me, backsliding Israel, has shown herself more righteous than treacherous Yehuda. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return, O backsliding Israel, declares Yehuda. I shall not look on you in displeasure, for I am kind, declares Yehuda, and I do not bear a grudge forever. Only acknowledge your crookedness, because you have transgressed against Yehuda, your Elohim and have scattered your ways to strangers under every green tree, and you have not obeyed my voice, declares Yahuwah. So they started practicing idolatry. Return, O backsliding children, declares Yahuwah, for I shall rule over you and shall take you, one from a city and two from a clan, and shall bring you to Zion. And I shall give you shepherds according to my heart, and they shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall be when you have increased and shall bear fruit in the land in those days, declares Yahuwah, that they no longer say the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah, neither would it come to heart, nor would they remember it, nor would they visit it, nor would it be made again. So it sounds like to me he's getting ready to do something a little bit different. All right, let's go into staying Jeremiah. Go to chapter 11, verse 15. Why should my beloved be in my house? She has done wickedness with many. And does the set-apart flesh remove your evil from you? Uh, that means uh, because you're a Hebrew or, you know, a, a Israelite that you, or a Jew, you think that's going to save you? uh uh then you rejoice, you, then you rejoice because you're a Jew or, you know, one of the tribes. Uh -uh. Yahuwah has named you green olive tree, fair of goodly fruit. With the noise of a great sound, he has set it on fire, and its branches shall be broken. And Yahuwah Saboeth, who planted you, has spoken evil against you for the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Yehuda, which they have done against themselves to provoke me by burning incense to Baal. And Yahuwah made it known to me, and I know it. Then you show me the, their deeds. Then you showed me their deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb brought to the slaughter, and I did not know that they had plotted against me, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit, and let us cut him off from the land of the living, and let his name be remembered no more. Wow, huh? So, uh, let's go stay in Jeremiah. And go to uh, six, uh, 16, verse, uh, chapter 16, verse 13. So I shall throw you out of this land into a land that you do not know, neither you nor your fathers, and there you shall serve other mighty ones day and night, where I show you no favor. 
Therefore, see, the days are coming, declares Yahuwah, when it is no longer said, Yahuwah lives who brought up the children of Israel from the land of Egypt. But Yahuwah lives who brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands where he had driven them. For I shall bring them back into their land, and I gave land I gave to their fathers. See, I am sending for many fishermen, declares Yahuwah, and they shall fish them. And after that I shall send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and every hill and out of the hole, holes in the rocks. For my eyes are on all their ways. They have not been hidden from my face, nor has their crookedness been hidden from my eyes. And, sh and, and first I shall repay double for their crookedness and their sin, because they have defiled my land with the dead bodies of their disgusting things, and have filled my inheritance with their abominations. O oh, Yahuwah, my strength and my stronghold, in my refuge, in the day of distress, the Gentiles shall come to you from the ends of the earth and say, Our fathers have inherited only falsehood, futility, and there is no value in them. Would a man make mighty ones for himself which are not mighty ones? Therefore, see, I am causing them to know. This time I cause them to know my hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is Yahuwah. So here we go. <clears throat> They've been scattered because of their idolatry, been divorced. They've mingled among the nations. He's, he's making them say, okay, you don't want me? Go worship the, 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 uh, you know, the mighty ones made of wood and stone along with the, with the, with the people of Iron and Covenant. Okay, so that's it. Now he's saying that he's going to bring the, the, them back. You know, the ones that are of the seed of Abraham, the lost sheep uh, that are mixed, so intermixed within the nations or the Gentiles, they don't even know who they are, but he does. So he's going to start waking them up to who they are, and they're going to realize that they've been living in the pig pen. You know, falsehood, futility, realize, hey, there's no, there's no benefit in this. You know, what are we doing? We need to turn back and go back to Yahuwah. And they're going to start calling back on his name from where they're at. So this is what this is saying, all right? And so, and for, so this is, is indicating then to us that some kind of renewed or new covenant is in the works, Okay. So if we can stay in Jeremiah, we'll go to 31 now, chapter 31. For this is the covenant, here we go. For this is the covenant I shall make with the house of Israel after those days, declares Yahuwah. I shall put my Torah in their inward parts and write it on their hearts. And I shall be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. So here we go. He's making a new covenant, or a renewed covenant, with the with the with the uh, descendants of Abraham. All right. So the old covenant is no longer, but then he's bringing he's 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 going to do a new covenant or a renewed covenant now. Uh, let's go to Ezekiel uh, thirty-six. 26. <clears throat> and I shall give you a new heart and put a new ruach or spirit within you. And I shall take the heart of stone out of your flesh. And I shall give you a heart of flesh and put my spirit within you. And I shall cause you to walk in my laws and guard my right rulings and shall do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And you shall be my people, and I shall be your Elohim. So here we find out that uh, he's, it's, he's not changing his laws or his commands. Okay, he's just changing, he's just uh, replacing or modifying the covenant. 
okay? Not as laws or statutes or commands or right rulings. That's all staying the same. He's writing the same ones instead of on stone, placed inside of an ark of, made of wood and, and, and inlaid with and outlaid with gold and placed inside of a building in the inner chamber of a building. He's all of a sudden, he's going to do this on the inside of us, individuals, individually to the ones that are in, come into the covenant, the renewed covenant. That's the only thing that's changing. <clears throat> uh, so let's let's kind of let's get into that just a little bit. Uh, um, go to uh, John three five. Yahusha answered, "Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is begotten of water and the Spirit." He is unable to enter into the reign of Yahuwah. That which has been begotten of the flesh is flesh, and that which has been begotten of the Ruach is Ruach. Do not marvel that I said to you, you have to be begotten from above. The Ruach breathes where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but, but do not know where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who has been begotten of the Ruach. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How is it possible for this to take place? Yahusha answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know this? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak what we know and witness what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If you do not believe when I spoke to you about earthly matters, how are you going to believe when I speak to you about the heavenly matters? And no one has gone up into the heaven except he who came down from the heaven, the son of Adam. So here in this conversation with Nicodemus, our master Yahushua is revealing the renewed covenant, okay, by the water and the blood. Okay, it's how you you have to enter it. In other words, the children of Israel were scattered out into the truck into the nations. They became filthy, okay, by living among uh, the nations out of the covenant and worshiping and following after uh, idols, okay, made of wood and stone. They become filthy. So in order to come back into the renewed covenant, they're going to have to clean themselves up with water and blood. Okay, and so what Nicodemus is saying here, this is kind of a poor translation or understanding of the Hebrew or the Israelite culture. Okay, uh, Nicodemus uh, was actually saying to Yahusha here that how can I, who was born a Jew, be reborn and come as a, an, as a Jew again, is what he was saying. Because he felt he was already in the covenant through his circumcision, his fleshly circumcision. How can I, who is, who is a Jew, a natural Jew, be born again and become a Jew again? Because back then, the immersion of a person was in order for them to enter into the covenant. So they would immerse in order to become a Jew. And then they would be get circumcised as well. Okay. And, uh, and so this is what, you know, Nicodemus was confused about. And this is why Yahushua said to him, if you don't understand what I'm talking about when I'm talking to you on your level, on your fleshly reality. How are you going to talk, understand when I start telling you about spiritual matters? Okay, what this really means spiritually in my world, you know, in his reality. So that's what that was all about. So, uh, and we flip over there to Acts 2. Uh, Peter is, is addressing a crowd. And after he's received the Ruach, a promise, and he says, uh, the, the crowds uh, say to, back to him and the rest of the ones that have received the Ruach, 
men, brothers, what shall we do? And Kepha said to them, Repent, and let each one of you be immersed in the name of Yahushua Mashiach for the forgiveness of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Ruach HaKadosh for the promises to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as Yahuwah or Elohim shall call. All right, so those are speaking of the ones that have been scattered not the ones that remain in in there. Um, so, But the ones that remain in Israel at that time and all the ones that have been scattered, okay, uh, are, he's trying to tell them it doesn't matter if you're here if, if right now, if you're living you know, right here in Israel right now and you know that you're a Jew, or if you're scattered and you don't know you're a Jew, it don't matter, you have to enter the covenant the same way by water immersion. Okay, there's no free tickets into the renewed covenant. Okay, so um, flip over to Acts four twelve. It says, "And there is no deliverance in anyone else, for there is no other name under the heaven given among men by which we need to be delivered." So this is the name that we have to call on at our water immersion for deliverance, the deliverer Yahuwah, Yahusha. Okay, it also it indicates to us that we, the, he is the way. Okay, he is the renewed covenant through his blood atonement. So his Yahusha's, Yahusha is our Passover, okay, so his blood atones for our sins okay and that's he is how the renewed covenant uh, was established through Yahusha he is the renewed covenant basically okay so the blood and the water cleans us up from being scattered and living among the out of the covenant being thrown out of the covenant he cleans us all back up and brings us back in so we can come back in to and be in covenant with Yahuwah. The water and the blood cleans us up. All right. Um, proof of this basically uh, oh, is that the Jews have to do the same thing. A lot of people think, oh, if you're a Jew, you don't have to be water immersed. That's just for the Gentiles. And that's not true. It's for anybody that wants to enter into the covenant with Yahuwah. You have to go through the same process. There's only one process, one deliverer, one Torah. Okay? There's no difference between Jew or Gentile. Okay? Um, I'm going to get into the uh, how we engraft or how we join, get back into the covenant or enter the renewed covenant here in a little bit. Well, for now, let's let's look at an example of a Jew, if you want, if you will, that uh, actually had that actually went through this process, and that Jew is Paul. Okay, so Paul, being trained as a Pharisee, okay, was a Jew of Jews. Okay, he was well known man, as being you know at the top of the class, all right, cream of the crop type person. Oh, he was mixed, you know, uh, Roman and, and a Jew. Nevertheless, he was a Jewish citizen that was taught and trained uh, by the Pharisees. Uh, he was a Pharisee. So, Paul himself, he was, you know, in the, he was in the Old Covenant, of course. Uh, the, the, you know, the Abrahamic covenant that the uh, all the Jews, you know, were in at that particular time. Um, but uh, he had to, it was no good. It couldn't save them. So they had to come into the renewed covenant or the new covenant, you know, and that's what, that's what he found out. So in Acts 9, okay, uh, verse 10, 
9.10, okay, uh, we can read um, that it says, And there was uh, at Damascus a certain uh, student by the name of Canon Yah. Now this is after, you know, you, you know, uh, Paul was on the road to Damascus. Yahusha came, blinded him, and he's blind, okay? This is afterwards. Um, and there was at Damascus a certain student named Cananyan. And the master, Yahusha, said to him in a vision, Cananya, and he said, Here I am, master. And master Yahusha said to him, Arise, and go to the street called Straight, and seek in the house of Yehuda or Judah, for one called Shaul of Tarsus. For look, he is praying and has seen in a vision a man named Kananiah coming in and laying his hand on him so as to see again. So uh, he's letting him know that, you know, that Paul knows he's coming. And Kananiah answered, Master, I have heard from many about this man, how many evils he did to your set apart ones in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all those calling on your name. But the master said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before nations, sovereigns, and the children of Israel. For I shall show him how much he has to suffer for my name. And Ken and Yah went away and went into the house. And laying his hands on Paul, he said, Brother Paul, or Shaul, the master, Yahusha, who appeared to you on the way as you came, has sent me to you, so that you might see again and be filled with the Ruach HaKadosh. So that's the two reasons this guy was sent to Paul. He's sitting there in this room blind. The two reasons he just told Paul that he was there. Okay. Was so he might see again. Lay his hands on him so he can see. Alright. And be filled. Filled. With the Ruach HaKadosh. Not to water immerse him but to fill him with the Ruach HaKadosh and to lay his hands on him so he can see. That's the two reasons. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it were scales, and he received his sight. So there you go. The guy put his hands on him. He was given back his sight. So their number one reason was accomplished. In rising up, so after he got his sight back, he must have jumped up. I mean, think about it. if you were blind and somebody put his hand on you and all of a sudden your eyes, you could see again. He must have been very excited. Is that he rising up? So he must have jumped up out of that seat. Okay? And rising up, he was immersed. So he rising up, he was immersed with what? Water? No. He was in a room. He couldn't have been. <laughs> He was in the middle of a town inside of a room. No, he was immersed with the Ruach HaKadosh. Okay, Yahusha's spirit. That's what he was immersed with at that point. So that's number two just got fulfilled. And so he was, now he can see, and he received the Ruach HaKadosh. He was immersed in the spirit. That's the two reasons that guy went to Paul. They were both done right there. And having received food, so he must have ate, he was strengthened. So it takes a while to eat, you know. So he was, after he could see and he received the spirit, he received food and he, he ate so he could build up his strength. So that took a little while, you know. That, that wasn't within a minute or two. And Shaul was with the student at Damascus some days. So, and Shaul was with the Talmud, the student at Damascus some days. 
So he talked with the guy for some days. He was visited with them for some days. And immediately he proclaimed the Mashiach in the congregations that he is the son of Elohim. So he went around uh, witnessing and giving testimony of, of Yahuwah to all the congregations. And all who heard him were amazed and said, Is this not he who destroyed those calling on this name of Yahuwah? In Jerusalem, and has come here for this to take them bound to the chief priests. But Shoal kept increasing in strength and was confounding the Jews who dwelt in Damascus, proving that this is the Mashiach, proving that Yahusha is the Mashiach. So they're blown away. All of a sudden, Paul is no longer running around arresting people, beating them up, persecuting them, dragging them back to Jerusalem in, in front of the courts of the, of the uh, Pharisees to be tried and killed or stoned to death like Stephen was. He's now all of a sudden, he's using the name and he's proclaiming the name and, and proclaiming that Yahusha is the Messiah. Okay? So as, as far as we know, it doesn't mention water immersion at all yet, you know, just that he's got his sights back. He received the Ruach HaKadosh. He was immersed with the Ruach. He's eaten. He's got his strength back, and he's running around witnessing and giving testimony to all the people around Damascus, okay, blowing their minds because he's been changed dramatically. Um. Uh, the proof that Paul was immersed in the Spirit uh, can also be read in his testimony in 11, you know, that you're immersed in the Spirit, all right? Um, and so if we go to 11, verse 15, we can read, And as I begin to speak, uh, this, okay, this is Peter here speaking now. Here's Peter. This is also proof that the, you get immersed in the Spirit. And I began to speak. The set-apart Ruach fell upon them. As I began to speak, the set-apart Ruach fell upon them as upon us at the beginning. So Peter's describing what he saw happen to the nations, okay, or the people that are out of the covenant and I remembered the word of the master how he said Yahukanan the Mercer indeed immersed in water but you shall be immersed in the Ruach HaKadosh see that so he's comparing to being immersed in water and being immersed in the Ruach HaKadosh so if Elohim gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the Master Yahusha, Mashiach, how was I able to withstand Elohim? And having heard this, they were silent and praised Elohim, saying, Then Elohim has indeed also given to the nations repentance to life. In other words, repentance to life means that uh, they can in, come and graft into the renewed covenant as well. All right. So uh, the these uh, Yehudim that Peter is talking to, including him, have already received the Ruach, and they've already entered into the renewed covenant through the Messiah. And now they're being woke up uh, to the fact that the people that are outside of the covenant, even into the nations, as far as the nations, is able to come into the renewed covenant, okay, through immersion, through their repentance, and their immersion with water, and the immersion of the Ruach HaKadosh. They're waking up to that, and they're starting to get it. Uh, 
So then if we go over to Acts 15, uh, we can start with verse 14. It says, Peter has declared how Elohim first visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And the words of the prophets agree with this, as it has been written. After this I shall return and rebuild the booth of David, which has fallen down. And I shall rebuild its ruins, and I shall set it up, so that the remnant of mankind shall seek Yahuwah, even all the Gentiles on whom my name has been called, says Yahuwah, who is doing all this you doing all this who has made this known from old therefore i judge that we should not trouble those from among the nations who are turning to Elohim, but that we write to them to abstain from the defilements of idols and from whoring and from what is strangled and from blood for from ancient generations, Musha, or Moses, has in every city those proclaiming him, being read in the congregations every Shabbat. So here we find out that the council in Jerusalem, led by uh, Yahuwah's, Yahusha's brother James, uh, has come to the conclusion that the renewed covenant is not just for the children of Israel any longer. It's not for the Jews or the 12 tribes any longer. It's for everybody. And they've come to that realization. Boom. Lights came on. Okay. And so what, they, what they're saying is, look, this doesn't have anything to do with being a Jew anymore, being of the flesh or you know, our, our fleshly inheritance. This has something to do with, uh, um, you know, a renewed covenant, something different, okay? And so we all, you know, everyone is involved or can enter into this covenant. Not It's not just for an isolated group of people anymore. And this is what they're coming into real, realization of. But what they're saying here is, okay, we understand that this is not just for us, but these people who are unclean have been living an unclean lifestyle in the nations that have been worshiping idols and, and living filthy, okay, uh, partakers of the world. Um, go tell them to stop doing that. They have to stop worshiping idols. They can't sacrifice uh, animals and blood to these idols and be drinking that blood, you know, or eating uh, meat that's, you know, giving thanks and, pr you know, and praying for idols for thanks for the thanking them or, or uh, praising them with uh, with this food and then eating it, you know, and, uh, and going around whoring, doing all this fornication and idolatry and all this other stuff. And not to be eating anything that's strangled, you know, strangle it and then eat it, you know, or drink its blood, you know, because this is like what, uh, uh, you know, witchcraft and idolating, all this is about, you know, they do all this voodoo stuff, you know, they cut chickens heads off and drink the blood, you know, uh, if, and they're saying you can't be doing that, okay, you have to stop doing what you were taught to do from a babe. And start obeying. If you're going to enter into the covenant, you got to stop doing that. And then uh, go to the synagogues or the congregations on the Sabbath where they're reading the Torah, which is Moja, is being read and learn more and more and more. And the, what's going on about Yahuwah and about the covenant that you're entering. Study. You know. Um, so we'll continue here. I'm going to show you a few pictures, and then we're going to continue on. Very important subject. Stay with me.
Okay, so let's continue on with Paul's example of a Jew uh, having to also enter into the renewed covenant. Uh, you can go to uh, Acts 22, verse 6. And I also believe that this is evidence of a self-immersion. I believe Paul did a self-immersion. Okay. Um, it says, And it came to be, as I was journeying, this is Paul talking, uh, actually talking to a crowd of people, and it came to be as I was journeying and coming near Damascus about noon, abruptly a great light shone around me out of the sky, and I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Shaul, Shaul, why do you persecute me? And I answered, Who are you, Master? And he said to me, I am Yahusha of Nazareth, whom you persecute. And those who were with me indeed saw the light and were afraid, but they did not hear his voice speaking to me. And I said, What shall I do, Master? And the Master said to me, Rise up, go into Damascus, and there you shall be told all that you have been appointed to do. And as I could not see because of the esteem of that light, being led by the hand of those who were with me, I came into Damascus. So here he's blinded from the light. And a certain a man called Kenanya, a dedicated man, according to the Torah, being well spoken of by all the Yehudim dwelling there, came to me and stood by and said to me, Brother Shaul, look up. And at that same hour, I looked up at him. And he said, The Elohim of our fathers has appointed you to know his desire and to see the righteous one and to hear the voice from his mouth. Because you shall be his witness to all men of what you have seen and heard. And now, why do you delay? Rise up, be immersed. Okay, so right here, remember when we read previously, rise up and be immersed. Okay, so he saw, he was immer uh, immersed with the Ruach HaKadosh, because that's why that guy came there. Those were the two things he came there to do. But listen to what he says afterwards. And wash away your sins, calling on the name of Yahusha. Okay, so here we find out that he got his eyesight back. He rose up, immersed in the Ruach HaKadosh, and now he's telling him, go wash away your sins, calling on the name of Yahusha. So he's wanting him to go get immersed. See, he didn't tell us that before because he was only sent there to do two things. But this is Paul giving a testimony to, to a group of people what happened to him. And so here we find out that he was water immersed. Not at that exact moment because he was in a room in the middle of a town when he got his eyesight back and was immersed with the Spirit. But this is him giving testimony now. So he's confirming that indeed he was water immersed. So this is, this is what this is doing is, is, is a testimony that Paul was not was converted okay and entered into the covenant through the immersion of the Ruach HaKadosh and the immersion of water okay so this is the conversion of Paul that's what this is, is telling us so it came to be when I returned to Jerusalem and while I was praying in the set apart place I came to be in a trance and I saw him saying to me, Hurry and get out of Jerusalem speedily, because they shall not accept your witness concerning me. And I said, Master, they know that in every congregation I was imprisoning and beating those who believe on you. And when the blood of your witness, Stephen, was shed, 
I was, I also was standing by giving my approval to his death and keeping the garments of those who were killing him. And he said to me, go, because I shall send you far from here to the nations. So there we go. There's the evidence that even a Jew or natural born Israelite, if there are any, in fact, in our time period, you know, this was back then, okay, uh, several thousand years ago. Uh, if there are any, in fact, still remaining that are true uh, Israelites or, you know, Jews uh, with, that, with that fleshly inheritance, uh, they still have to uh, go into the renewed covenant through repentance, water immersion, immerse, immersion of the Ruach HaKadosh, the same way we do. Everybody has to do the same thing. Ain't nobody getting a free ticket. This is evidence of that. So I believe it's also evidence that Paul self-immersed. Because if you really think about it, uh, the guy that went in there and laid his hands on him, Kananya, um, and then he received his sight, and then he rose up and received the Ruach HaKadosh, was immersed with the Ruach. Then he told Paul, what are you waiting for? Go get immersed and immerse yourself in water in the name of Yahusha, right? Well, this, he, it says he spent a several days with this guy, okay? But that doesn't mean that that guy immersed Paul, okay? I think Paul took off on his own and went and wandered around there a little bit and, and got and, and found water, went down to a baptism, and immersed himself. That's what I believe. Now, it's possible that that guy might have went with Paul and, and, and immersed Paul, but I don't think so because he told Paul, go and get, and get water immersed. He didn't say, come on, I'll go with you and immerse you. He doesn't say that, you know. And plus, that guy was shell-shocked. He was a little bit leery of Paul to begin with, so he probably didn't want to go with him after he obeyed the commands that he was sent there to do by Yahusha, you know, when he told Paul, go water immerse yourself, what are you waiting for? He was probably going, well, I'm glad he's gone. You know, he probably still a little bit scared of Paul because he, he knew Paul and he knew of his reputation. You know, so since he said, go, what are you waiting for? Go, be immersed in the name of Yahusha. I think Paul went on his own and went and, and water immersed himself. That doesn't mean there wasn't no witnesses there. There could have been very well been people sitting there watching him do it. Or if there was nobody, then we know that there's a legion of messengers watching. And of course, Yahuwah himself is watching, witnessing it. So you can self-immerse, and I believe that's evidence that you can do that. If you're looking for scriptural evidence, I do believe there it is. I really do. Um, so anyway... That brings us to, uh, uh, you know, the understanding then at this point is that uh, there's, a, there's an olive tree, okay? The olive tree itself, the olive tree. And I know there's two olive trees and two witnesses and all that, you know, but the olive tree, all right, is Israel. Okay, spiritually, it's Israel, the olive tree. Now, you can read Jeremiah 11, verses 16 and 17, and Hosea 14, verses 5 and 6. But Israel is the olive tree. The believers, okay, or the ones that have entered into the covenant or the renewed covenant, okay, are the Nazarene, okay, of the olive tree, or the branches, okay, the branches. Uh, the Nazarene are the branches, or the believers, okay, the branches of the olive tree. So they've joined into the covenant, okay, or into the, grafted onto the olive tree, which is Israel. This is all spiritual, you got to understand what your spiritual mind, not your fleshly mind. The root or the vine 
of the olive tree is Yahusha HaMashiach. Okay, so it's all based on Yahusha. He's Yahusha is the renewed covenant. It's who he's who made it possible for all this to happen. Remember, because the old covenant's gone, now, he divorced them, so he's bringing them back from out of the filthy pig pen, of the world. Okay, back into a renewed covenant under the same statutes, laws, right rulings, same everything. Okay, except it's a his covenant. Is being is renewed in a different way. All right, it's a renewed covenant. So Yahusha Mashiach is the root or the vine of the olive tree. You can read Isaiah eleven ten, Revelations five five, and Revelations twenty two sixteen. All right, so there's there's what we need to get this vision. Big old olive tree. Okay. The olive tree itself is Israel. The branches are the Nazarene, or the believers, those who have entered into the covenant with Yahuwah. The roots, or the vine of the olive tree, is Yahusha HaMashiach. Okay, so you were, what you're doing is we were, we we're grafting into him. Okay, he's the source of our supply. The roots, the vine. Without him, branches will die wither and die if the roots cut off. You can't live without the root or the vine. You know, so that's Yahusha. That's all spiritually. So, I guess, uh, you know, we need to kind of understand the uh, a little bit about what the, the renewed covenant is a little bit more. Uh, so, in order to do that, um, let's go to uh, let's jump to Romans 8 real quick if you will, uh, verse 5. It says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the matters of the flesh. But those who live according to the Ruach, the matters of the Ruach. For the mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the Spirit, or Ruach, is life and peace. Because the mind of the flesh is hatred toward Yahuwah, for it does not subject itself to the Torah of Yahuwah, neither indeed is it able. And those who are in the flesh are unable to please Yahuwah. So if you find yourself not being able to uh, obey the commandments, or not loving the commandments, or don't, not believing, you were thinking and teaching that the commandments are obsolete or abolished or something like that, then apparently you're in the mind of the flesh. That's what scripture just told us. You're living in the flesh. You're not living in the spirit and truth. If you're teaching people that, or if, they, if, if, if you find those Ten Commandments to be repulsive or, or of no value, you're in the mind of the flesh. Read it yourself. Romans 8. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the Ruach, or spirit of Yahuwah, indwells you. And if anyone does not have the Ruach of Mashiach, this one is not his. And if Mashiach is in you, living in you, the body is truly dead on account of sin. So you can't save the body. Even if he's living in you, that body's still condemned to death. Can't save your flesh, is what's telling you. But the Ruach is life on account of righteousness. So your inner being, your Ruach, your spirit, or your inner man, or your soul, is what still can be delivered, okay? And uh, it's given, you can receive life. You're not going to be totally destroyed. You're going to be given another immortal body on account of righteousness. All right? So uh, the inner being, which was made in the image or essence of Yahuwah, is still on trial. When you enter the covenant, you're saving your inner being, not your flesh. Your flesh is gone on account of sin. It's saturated in sin, and can't, sin can't be removed from your flesh. It's condemned to death, period. It will return to dust. 
uh, in the Ruach of him who raised Yahusha from the dead dwells in you. So the Ruach who raised Yahusha's fleshly body from the dead is also the same Ruach that dwells in you. So if it raised his fleshly body from the dead, he can raise your fleshly body from the dead. That's what this is telling you. He who raised the Mashiach from the dead shall also give life to your mortal bodies through his Ruach dwelling in you. So then, brothers, we are not debtors to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you are going to die. But if by the Ruach you put to death the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the Ruach of Yahuwah, these are the sons of Yahuwah. For you did not receive the Ruach of bondage again to fear, but you received the Ruach of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Ruach himself bears witness with our Ruach that we are children of Yahuwah. Okay. His Ruach himself bears witness with our Ruach that we are children of Yahuwah. So he's, uh, he's living or sitting in our being his spirit is in our spirit, sitting in our being. We have become the our being has become his mercy seat. And of children also heirs, truly heirs of Yahuwah, and co heirs with Mashiach, if indeed we suffer with him, in order that we also be exalted together. Okay, so this is explaining the renewed covenant, what's going on with the renewed covenant. Okay, let's now go to Romans 11. Uh, I mean, not Romans 11. Uh, go to uh, to, he, uh, to Hebrews. And that would be Hebrews, Hebrews 8. I do believe. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Hebrews 8, uh, verse uh, 6. But now he has ordained, or he has obtained a more excellent service, inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant, which was constituted on better promises for that for if that first had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. For finding fault with them, he says, See, the days are coming, says Yahuwah, when I shall conclude with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehuda a renewed covenant. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says Yahuwah. So see, here we're, we're finding out, man, he's, he got rid of that old covenant that he made with them. And he's, this is a new deal, man. The house of Israel and the house of Yehuda, okay, is going to be brought together into one house, or an olive tree. All right, they ain't gonna be separate anymore. He's making one out of the two, one. Uh, because this is the covenant that I shall make with the house of Israel after those days. See the house of Israel, says Yahuwah, given my laws in their mind, and I shall write them on their hearts. And I shall be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. And they shall by no means teach one, each one of his neighbor, and each one his brother, saying, Know Yahuwah, because they all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them. Because I shall forgive their rebellion, and their sins, and their lawlessness, I shall no longer remember. By saying, Renewed, he has made the first old, now 
that become now what becomes old and growing aged is near disappearing. And then in Hebrews 10, verse 14, we read, For by one offering he has perfected for all time those who are being set apart. And the Ruach HaKadosh also witnesses to us, for after having said before, This is the covenant that I shall make with them after those days, says Yahuwah, given my laws unto their hearts and in their minds I shall write them and their sins and their lawlessness I shall remember no more. Now where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer a slaughter offering for sin. So brothers, have in boldness to enter into the set-apart place by the blood of Yahusha, by a new and living way which he instituted for us through the veil, that is, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of Yahuwah, let us draw near with the true heart and completeness of belief, having our hearts sprinkled from a wicked conscience and our bodies washed with clean water. So we've been cleaned out with the water and the blood. Okay. So, uh, this is speaking to us of the renewed covenant and how it works. All right? It's no longer the old covenant, it's the renewed covenant. Okay? And he's making one tree, one olive tree out of the two. All right? So, um, we can read about this in Ephesians uh, 3. And if we, we just go to, uh, our, let's go to Ephesians 2. First of all, let's read Ephesians 2. And we, this, this is very important. Let's not skip it. Uh, Ephesians 2. And you were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world. So you were in the worldly, okay? Which is one of our enemies, the world. According to the ruler of the authority of the air. The ruler of the authority of the air is Satan, Satan. That's another one of our enemies. Of the mind that is now working in the sons of rebellion. So they're in the mind of the flesh, or the mind of, or the, uh, being controlled by the spirit of the delusion. Among whom also we all once lived the lusts of our flesh. The lust of our flesh. There's our third enemy. So the world. Satan and his demons and our flesh is who we battle against every day, basically, especially the flesh and the world. Doing the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by disposition children of wrath. And as we were heading for the second death, as also the rest, everybody else is too. But Yahuwah, who is rich in compassion, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Mashiach. By favor you are being delivered. By favor you are being delivered. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenlies in Mashiach Yahusha, in order to show in the coming ages the exceeding riches of his favor and kindness toward us in Mashiach Yahusha. For by favor you have been delivered through belief, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of Yahuwah. It is not by works, so that no one should boast. Now works here, okay, uh, means deliverance through human effort. Uh, to continue to break Yahuwah's Torah, thinking obedience is works, is lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Alright, so you can't obtain deliverance by works, okay, by doing any human effort, is what it means. Uh, it's a gift of Yahuwah. 
For we are his workmanship, created in Mashiach Yahusha to good works, which Yahuwah prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And that's his Torah, or his Ten Commandments. That's what he's talking about. Therefore, remember that you, formerly Gentiles in the flesh, who are called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Mashiach, excluded from the citizenship of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no expectation and without Yahuwah in the world. So you are out of the covenant. If you're out of the covenant, you're heading for the second death. You've got to enter the covenant. But now in Mashiach Yahusha, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of the Mashiach. Now listen to this very closely, starting in verse 14, 2, Ephesians 2.14. Uh, for he is our peace who has made both one, and having broken down the partition of the barrier, having abolished in his flesh the opposition, the law prescribed in procedures, so as to create in himself one renewed man from the two, thus making peace, making peace with Yahuwah. And to completely restore, to favor both of them to Yahuwah in one body through the stake, having destroyed the opposition by it. Making the two olive trees one. Okay. He came and declared peace to you who were far off and peace to those near. Because through him we both have access to the Father by one Ruach. So then you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the Kodeshim and members of the household of Yahuwah. Having been built upon the foundation of the emissaries and prophets, Yahusha Mashiach himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building, being joined together, grows into a set-apart Mishkin in Yahusha, or Yahuwah, in whom you also are being built together into a dwelling of Yahuwah in the Ruach. So you're becoming, uh, you're the body, <laughs> one body. Because of this, I, Paul, the prisoner of Yahushua Mashiach, on behalf of you, foreigners, if indeed you have heard of the ministration of the favor of Yahuwah that was given to me for you, that, my, that by revelation was made known to me the secret, <coughs> as I wrote before briefly. In reading this, then, you are able to understand my insight into the secret of Mashiach, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed by the Ruach to his set-apart emissaries and prophets. <coughs> the nations, the nations to be co-heirs, united in the same body and partakers together in the promise in Mashiach through the Basora, of which I became a servant according to the gift of the favor of Yahuwah given to me, according to the working of his power. To me, the very least of all the set-apart ones, this favor was given to bring the Basora of the unsearchable riches of Mashiach among the nations, and to make all see how this secret is administered, which for ages past has been hidden in Yahuwah, who created all through Yahusha Mashiach. Catch that? He created all through Yahusha Mashiach. 
so that now through the assembly the many-sided wisdom of Yahuwah might be known to the principalities and authorities in the heavenlies according to the everlasting purpose which he made in Mashiach Yahusha our master in whom we have boldness and access with a reliance through belief in him I pray therefore that you do not lose heart at my pressures on your behalf which is your esteem. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Master Yahushua Mashiach, from whom all things in the Shemayim and Aretz is named, in order that he might give you, according to the riches of his esteem, by power to be strengthened in the inner man through his Ruach, that the Mashiach might dwell in your hearts through belief, having become rooted and grounded and love in order that you might be strengthened to firmly grasp with all the Kodeshim what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Mashiach which surpasses knowledge so that you might be filled to all the completeness of Yahuwah wow 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 and to him who is able to do exceedingly above what we ask or think, according to the power that is working in us, to him be esteemed in the assembly by Mashiach Yahusha to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. I hope you caught all that. Uh, it's basically letting us know what, what's going on uh, with the two olive trees and Israel and all that. Okay, so it, it, to, to uh, paragraph it, uh, it uh, you know, it just means that he's taken the two men, okay, if you will, all right, the Jews or the Orthodox uh, Jews and the Christians, all believers, and he's taken the truth out of both of them and he's putting all the truth together and completing the truth and within one man he's making one man out of the truth in both trees out of the good fruits and making one tree Israel, one olive tree with messiah being the vine or the roots the branches are the nazarene who have no lie in them the perfect bride, clean, no blemish, no spot, no wrinkles, okay, with the proper oil in them, in their hearts, which is the indwelling spirit of Yahusha. This is all spiritual, folks. Um, and so uh, the engrafting, uh, you know, we also, you know, that also hit on that, you know, uh, it, that's what the engrafting is. We all engraft into the natural olive tree, uh, which is all the people that are out of the covenant comes into the covenant. You're engrafting. See that? That's how you engraft. You come out from the world, you know, and out of the flesh, mind of the flesh, out of the world, and away from Satan and his demons, and you enter in through the covenant, through your water immersion and the spiritual immersion. And you enter into the renewed covenant, okay, which is the olive tree. So you've been grafted in. You became part of the branches of the olive tree, the one olive tree, whose roots and vine is Yahusha Mashiach. So that Ephesians 3 hit on that pretty hard. Ephesians 2 and 3, read it. It's powerful stuff. Uh a little bit more about the engrafting because it's very important to really to get a get a solid handle on that to, to, to fully understand that is is very important. So let's go to Romans uh, 11, and we need to fully understand this engrafting business. Okay, uh, I say then, has Yahuwah rejected his people? All right. So that here's the big question. Let it not be. So now he has not. For I also am a Israelite. 
okay? So this is Paul. He said, I'm a, you know, I hope not, because I'm an Israel. I hope he's not rejecting his people. Uh, he's of the seed of Abraham. So fleshly, you know, outwardly by his body, his flesh, his, he knows he's from the seed of Abraham. He knows he's a true, he's, uh, you know, a true Jew or Israelite, you know. <coughs> of the tribe of Benjamin. So he even knows that he's from the tribe of Benjamin. It's 2,000 years ago now. So Paul knows that, uh, you know, he was an Israelite from the seed of Abraham, and he comes from the tribe of Benjamin. So he's not from the tribe of Yehuda. He knows what tribe he's from, although he was from the southern kingdom, okay, which would have been one of the olive trees because Israel did split. I won't get into that, but if you get that book, you know, you can learn all about that. Again, here it is. I mean, it's good. You should get it. Yahuwah has not rejected his people whom he knew beforehand. Or do you not know what the scripture says of Allah Yahu? How he pleaded, he pleads with Yahuwah against Israel, saying, Yahuwah, they have killed your prophets and overthrown your altars, and I alone am left, and they seek my life? But what does the answer of Yahuwah say to him? I have left for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal, or Lord. So therefore also, at this present time, a remnant according to the choice of favor has come to be. And if by favor, it is no longer of works. Otherwise, favor is no longer favor. And if it is works, it is no longer favor. Otherwise, work is no longer work. So now we're in, in other words, you can't get rid you can't get rid of your sins by animal sacrifices, or you can't earn your way into into the covenant by doing things good works, good things. Okay, this is what he's saying here. What then? Israel has not obtained what it seeks, but the chosen did obtain it, and the rest were hardened. So the elect did get it, receive it, and enter into the renewed covenant, but the rest were still hardened. The world's hardened. Okay. As it has been written, Yahuwah has given them a ruach of deep sleep. Deep sleep or delusion. Eyes not to see and ears not to hear to this day. Deud also says, Let their table become a snare and for a trap and for a stumbling block and a recompense to them. Let their eyes be darkened, not to see, and bow down their back always. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Let it not be. But by their fall, deliverance has come to the nations, to provoke them to jealousy. And if their fall is riches for the world, and their failure riches for the nations, how much more their completeness. For I speak to you, the nations, inasmuch as I am an emissary to the nations, I esteem my service. If somehow I might provoke to jealousy those who are of my flesh and save some of them. So this is back in the 2,000 years ago. You got to keep that in mind. For if their casting away is the restoration to favor of the world, what is their acceptance but life from the dead? Now, if the first fruit is set apart, the lump is also. And if the root is set apart, so are the branches. And if some of the branches were broken off, and you being a wild olive tree have been grafted in among them, and came to share the root and fatness of the olive tree, do not boast against the branches. 
And if you boast, remember, you do not bear the root, but the root bears you. So if you have entered through the covenant, don't come in there, you know, cause, cause some problems and boast and everything among the other branches. Stay humble. Walk with humility. Um, you shall say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Good. By unbelief they were broken off, and you stand by belief. Belief in what Yahusha has done is the, has established the renewed covenant. Um, the ones that don't believe that, and they still think they're under the old covenant, you know, uh, are in error. So, but do not be arrogant about this. Do not be arrogant toward them, but fear. But fear Yahuwah. For if Yahuwah did not spare the natural branches, he might not spare you either. See then the kindness and sharpness of Yahuwah on those who fell sharpness, but toward you kindness. If you continue in his kindness, otherwise you also shall be cut off. See that? That means you can lose your salvation. And they also, if they do not continue in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For Yahuwah is able to graft them in again. So if they, if they start, if they realize that the old covenant has been done away with, and they start believing in the renewed covenant or the, you know, that Yahusha came and established, they can enter into the renewed covenant. Anybody can that does that. For if you were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by, de, uh, uh, wild by des, descent, and were grafted contrary to conventional descent into a good olive tree, how much more shall those who are the cultivated branches be grafted into their own olive tree? So, you know, the deliverance is of the Yehudim. He wants, he wants his people, man. I mean, you know. He's not turned his back on his people, for sure. And this, again, this was 2,000 years ago. Do we really know who the, who, who's, who's uh, Yehudim or from any of the other tribes? Do we? Today? I don't know. You know, I don't know. I think maybe, maybe all of us are, uh, you know, we're, we're all from nations now. We all have to enter the same new covenant anyway. That's the bottom line. Don't matter what your, what your race or your nationality or, or what your flesh is, you know. You still, there's only one covenant now, one blood covenant that, that, that uh, you can enter. The old one's gone. For I do not wish you to be ignorant of this secret, brothers, lest you should be wise in your own estimation that hardening in part has come over Israel until the entirety of the nations has come in. Okay, so I believe that that right there is, and this is 2,000 years ago, okay? you got to remember that. Uh, until the entirety of the nations or the Gentiles has come in. I believe that means to where all the elect, the, the remnant of all the lost sheep, okay, has been found. Once he's found all his sheep, because he knows who belongs to him, once they've all entered into the covenant again, come back into the, re, the covenant or the renewed covenant, I think that's when the door gets closed, okay? Once he's, once he's found all his lost sheep, it's, oh, it's all over but the crying then. And so all Israel shall be delivered, as it has been written. The deliverer shall come out of Zion, and he shall turn away wickedness from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them, when I take away their sins. So there you go. He's going to forgive, forget them their sins. They're going to enter into the covenant, and they're going to become one tree, one olive tree, which is Israel. Okay? And he's going to forget their sins. 
they're all going to be back into the covenant with him or back he's into his marriage into the marriage with Yahuwah. okay so truly, as regards the Besorah, they are enemies for your sake. But concerning the choice, they are beloved for the sake of their fathers. For the gifts and the calling of Yahuwah are not to be repented of. For as you also at one time disobeyed Yahuwah, but now have obtained compassion through their disobedience. So also these have now disobeyed that through the compassion shown you, they also might obtain compassion. For Yahuwah has shut them all up to disobedience in order to have compassion on all. Oh, the depths of riches and wisdom and knowledge of Yahuwah. How unsearchable his judgments and untraceable his ways. For who has known the mind of Yahuwah? Or who has become his counselor? Or who first gave to him, and it shall be given back to him? Because of him, and through him, and to him are all, to, him, to whom be esteemed forever. Amen. I call upon you, therefore, brothers, through the compassion of Yahuwah, to present your bodies a living offering, set apart, well-pleasing to Yahuwah. Your reasonable worship. Your reasonable worship is to walk in the spirit, in the truth, obeying Yahuwah's commands. That's the highest form of worship, is obedience. That's what that's talking about, your reasonable worship. It's easy to obey Yahuwah's commands. And when you have the indwelling spirit of Yahusha in you, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you prove what is that good and well-pleasing and perfect desire of Yahuwah. Okay, so the good and well-pleasing and perfect desire of Yahuwah is your obedience and love. <laughs> All right. So, uh... That pretty much, uh, you know, wraps that up. I mean, as far as scripture goes. So again, just as a sort of a uh, refresher, you know, uh, how do Gentiles begin? If y'all don't have this book, you ought to get this one too. I really definitely, you really should definitely have this in your arsenal. You know, this is one of Lou White's books, but uh, anyways, in page 144, if you do have it, it says um, in Acts 15, at the Jerusalem Council, the issue of fleshly circumcision, circumcision, which or the sign of the land covenant, was debated and called a yoke that neither we nor our fathers have been able to bear. Peter told them of how he learned that no man is unclean. Uh, Acts 10. He saw unclean animals which are alluded to men, not food, as he explains in Acts 11. When Gentiles heard the message, Peter said their hearts were purified by belief, and they received the gift of the Spirit, and were immersed. Spiritual circumcision. Okay, so... The, they received the gift of the Spirit and were immersed by the Spirit, okay? The spiritual immersion of the Ruach HaKadosh. There's water immersion and there's spiritual immersion. It's plain. Scripture's very plain on that. You have to have both. You can't just do one. you got to have both, okay? <clears throat> then James, or Yaqub, decided the beginning steps for the new converts. They were coming out of the nations or the Gentiles, the people that were outside of the covenant. It is my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to Elohim. <clears throat> they had no fleshly circumcision. That's, that was the whole thing. 
say the 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 the, the ones that that were the natural brand, the natural olive tree or the Jews still was clinging to the old covenant. They thought that you had to enter Israel through fleshly circumcision. Okay? Also water immersion now, you know, to enter there, but then you had to be circumcised. And that's what this big debate was all about. And Paul really struggled uh, with it, especially with the with the uh, Jews or the Israelites that were in dispersia, you know, around the Mediterranean seaboard and in Asia. He was he just fighting and fighting and fighting with them over that. He was trying to explain to them, no, the old covenant's gone. This is a new covenant. And there's only one covenant, or a new covenant. There's not two anymore. There's one, okay, just one olive tree. And so what's that for Paul's struggle was with, uh, with the uh, lost sheep? Instead, we should write to them, telling them to, one, abstain from blood polluted by idols. Because they were idol worshippers. And they used to try and tell them, you've got to get away from the idol, the idolatries and falsehoods, what they were told them, this was the thing they had to do. Uh, and, and then the second thing was sexual immorality or uh, fornication, idolatry, perversion sexual perversion, bestiality, stuff like that, um, you know, uh, uh, prostitutes in the, t in the temples, in their sun temples, stuff like that. Three, the meat of strangled animals and from and restrained from drinking their blood. So you weren't allowed to, uh, st in other words, meat of strangled animals, kill them and eat them, man. I mean, basically raw, I guess, like eating a raw steak. And drinking the blood, you're not allowed to eat, drink blood. Okay, so he told me that's you got to stop doing all these uh, idle uh, rituals, you know, festivals and traditions. Is really what he's telling them. Get totally out of the idolatry that you've been raised in. For Moses, uh, or the Torah, the five first five books of the Torah is referred to as Moja. Have, has been preached in every city from the earliest times and is read in the synagogues on every Sabbath. Find that in Acts 15, verses 19 through 21. So stop being idolaters. Stop practicing the rituals and traditions that you were raised up in and start going to the synagogues and learning more about Yahuwah and His ways and His right rulings. That's, that's what they were telling them. They didn't expect for them to know everything right off the get-go, you know, but stop with the idolatry and start learning more. Every Sabbath, go and learn more. Okay, that's what they were telling them to do. Because few could read and write. They were all mostly uh, were illiterates. And because scrolls were not widely available. The converts needed to attend the readings of the Torah, prophets, and writings at synagogues or houses of study in order to learn more. The Nazarene remained a part of the wider group of the Yehudim, and even many synagogue rulers were Nazarene. The main disruption of this oneness was caused by the Romans, which was a war that was conducted and orchestrated by Satan. When they destroyed the temple in 70 CE, and again crushed the Yehudim 60 years later. Satan managed to kill millions of Nazarim and dispersed us into the surrounding regions because Yahushua warned us beforehand that when we saw armies surrounding the city to flee to the mountains. The Nazarim were, were uh, shunned uh, from the rest of the Jews because they did not stay and fight. Without the temple and the ceremonial sacrificial system, the Jews developed uh, among the dispersed Yehudim, I mean, rab rabbinical Judaism or Orthodox Judaism developed among the dispersed Jews. Satan pursued the woman or the Asha or Yahuwah's bride and wife. It says in uh, Revelations 12, then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to make war against the rest of her offspring, the remnant, those who obey Yahuwah's commandments and hold to the testimony of Yahusha. 
What is the testimony of Yahusha? Repent, for the reign of Yahuwah draws near. In other words, repent, be water immersed, be spiritually immersed, and enter into the renewed covenant. Okay? You can't stay outside the covenant, okay, or you're going to head, that, that road takes you to the second death. Well, there will be wailing and gnashing of the teeth, folks. It's a serious, serious matter. Prophecy is also the testimony of Yahusha as he speaks through us. So teaching can be prophecy as he speaks through us. Prophecy is his testimony as he speaks through us. We are engaged in a spiritual war and wear the Torah as our armor. Yahusha is the living word, and so we are clothed in him. We are what scripture describes as the meek, the humble. Our sword is the word of Yahuwah, his Torah. The true elders who serve our rabbi did not plunder the flock, but serve and feed the flock. You can recognize us by our fruits, whether or not we keep and teach others the commandments. Read all of 1 John or Yahukanan carefully. We also carry the true message of the Mashiach. We have been saved by his favor. The unmerited loving kindness of the gift of the spirit of Yahusha who has written his Torah on our hearts and minds. Now having the ability to love and obey his commandments, we do not sin against him or them. We are led by the spirit, the spiritual seed, not the flesh, which is Hagar, or the mind of the flesh, or the slave woman, slave to sin and death. The commandments are spiritual. But the mind of the flesh wars against them continuously. How do we show our love for Yahuwah? We obey his Torah, his teachings, covenant of love. We are the wise virgins who await our bridegroom, having the oil or the Torah or the enduring spirit of Yahusha that lights our way, lights our path. If you have been raised in or converted to Christianity, you should by now be starting to see the rotten decay that paganism brought into the barrel of apples long ago. The Torah, or the teachings or instructions, is the rock that the wise man will build his house on. You need no other rabbi or the approval of any man to convert to the religion of Yahusha, which is the renewed covenant. It's a relationship, not a religion. We do not beg for money, but work ourselves. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. The wisdom of Torah is more precious than gold or rubies. It must not be sold. The renewed covenant makes you an heir of the promises, and you will be included at the wedding supper of the bridegroom, not locked, out, not locked outside of the city like the dogs, the murderers, the lovers of falsehood. The idolaters all be locked out. It doesn't matter how much you pay your pastor to spread the message or the rain. You must do it yourself. His name in the covenant is the buried treasure. So apply your whole heart and mind to remain steadfast. Endure. You can trust your husband to be faithful and he will say, Well done, good and faithful servant. If he gives you five pieces of silver or wisdom and knowledge and understanding, and you return to him five additional pieces at his return, which means you have infested and helped others to be converted and enter the covenant, you will be greatly rewarded in his kingdom. Your money cannot help you. People who misunderstand the parables or are uh, tricked by their pastors not only are blocked from the covenant, but they are also plundered by the savage wolves. The reason so many men can peddle the word of Yahuwah for profit is because the message is veiled. 
The harvest is a great is great because there are billions alive right now who need to hear the true message of the reign of Yahuwah. The harvest of the earth is coming very soon, probably within the next generation or 70 to 100 years or so. You have the regathering of Israel from 1948. But no man knows the day and hour is coming. We will know the season. How I have to continue on. I ran out of time. I didn't realize it. Just continue where we ended. But no man knows the day or hour of his coming. We will know the season, however. First you must be immersed, calling upon the name of Yahusha for the forgiveness of your past uncleanliness or your sins. Then walk in the truth, which is the Torah, the covenant. Enter into the covenant. You will know you are Yahuwah's bride because he will indwell you. The oneness of marriage, the message or the gospel uh, or the basura of the reign of Yahuwah is linked to the idea of a marriage covenant and begins with Yahuwah's call. If we agree to his covenant, which is the Ten Commandments, then we love him and obey him as a husband is to be obeyed by his wife. He loves, provides for us, and protects us as a wife, as his wife. The immersion into the waters, that some people call baptism, removes our uncleanliness, and we are then enabled to become one with our maker. He only seeks the love of a faithful bride and he is not bashful about telling us he is jealous. He calls us out from the ancient paganism which pollutes his bride. This is why the prophet Hosea was told to make a prostitute his bride, to illustrate how we make Yahuwah feel. At our resurrection, he will inhabit us fully. It is most important that we be immersed in his name then sealed in his name with the laying on of hands. A faithful wife is an obedient wife who obeys out of love. It's a covenant of love. Hashatan hates and attacks marriages, all types of marriages. It's important that we consider the impact that Constantine had on our accepted customs because he filtered out the Hebrew roots of the faith or belief. Okay, so that's where Christianity came from, was Constantine. He's the one that devised all that evil schemes, um, no doubt authored and controlled and orchestrated by Hashatan, the devil, or the serpent of old. Uh, so I hope this helps everyone to understand what's going on and uh, the main thing is to leave the mind of the flesh the flesh leave the world become un you know remain unstained from the world don't ever go back into the pig pen and get dirty again once you've become became you've become clean and stay away from Satan and his demons, put on the full armor of Yahuwah, and we'll yield the sword of truth, you know, which is the word of truth or the Tanakh, you know, and uh, stay in the covenant. Don't leave the covenant. Obey his commandments and all his commands. Pray continuously fast and pray if you're having trouble if you're being attacked fast and pray um, <clears throat> the main thing is to understand that the old covenant is no longer uh, effective you know so circumcision or your your culture or your your inheritance or your uh, you know fleshly inheritance or your race 
uh, and stuff, it's not, it's not going to save you. It's not going to deliver you. That's, that's gone. Okay. It's not, he got, he divorced them, spread them out, and ran them out into all four corners of the earth. Okay. And, uh, they, uh, you know, so it, it was, it was divorced. They were divorced, basically. He got rid of that. But then he, he calls, he's going to call them back, in which he is doing. And he's created a, the, another covenant, which is basically based on the same laws, commandments, right rulings. And he's calling them back as Israel to rule with him forever as one tree, though. Okay, all the uh, natural born Israelites, all the scattered tribes that have intermingled with other flesh, with the idolaters, and have been uh, worshiping as idolaters, don't even know who they are. Those were the remnant of the Gentiles with the Abraham seed in them. They don't even know it. The remnant or his elect, the chosen ones out of that group, he is calling them back to understand the understanding that, hey, I've got another covenant here I'm going to make with you. I'm giving you this last chance, okay? And come back into the covenant through Yahushua HaMashiach and his atonement blood and graft back into the one olive tree, all of you, all both houses of Israel, you know, the house of Israel that's living scattered among the earth, living in dispersia, and any natural born Israelites that are still part of the old covenant or practicing the old covenant laws and rituals, all of you, the entire world, come and graft into the one olive tree or Israel into my renewed covenant. And this time I'm going to write my commandments or my right rulings and laws in your heart, in your inward parts, your heart and your mind. And once I've cleaned you out with water and blood by the immersion of water immersion, and the immersion of the Ruach HaKadosh, me entering you, cleaned up with the blood and the water, I will immerse you with the Ruach HaKadosh, come into you, and indwell you, and live in you. And you'll be my temple. Uh, so that's what's on the table, you know, and be delivered from the second death, or the lake of fire. You must enter into the blood covenant, or the renewed covenant, through Yahushua HaMashiach and receive his indwelling spirit. The outward sign that you're entering into the renewed covenant is your water immersion. Okay, it also cleans you up. The blood in the water cleans you up. Those are the two witnesses. <clears throat> so, hope this helps. And, uh, you know, get these books here, especially this one, if you want to learn more about this subject, you know. And, uh, you know, get Lou's book here, too. Should have that in your arsenal or your study library. And uh, I thank you for watching. Remember... To stay in love with Yahusha HaMashiach and seek out the face of Yahuwah and enter his renewed covenant. So long, folks. Bonus feature time! 
I'm going to go to John, 1 John chapter 5. If you get a chance, read 1 John in context. It's very important. It's huge. Read 1 John in context. Right now, let's go to chapter 5. Everyone who believes that Yahusha is the Mashiach has been born of Yahuwah. And everyone who loves the one bringing forth also loves the one having been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of Yahuwah, when we love Yahuwah and guard his commandments. For this is the love of Yahuwah, that we guard his commandments, and his commandments are not difficult. Because everyone having been begotten of Yahuwah, overcomes the world. And this is the overcoming that has overcome the world, our belief. Amuna. Who is the one who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Yahusha is the son of Yahuwah. This is the one that came by water and blood. Yahusha Mashik not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Ruach who bears witness, because the Ruach is the truth. Because there are three who bear witness, the Ruach and the water and the blood. And the three are in agreement. Now what does that mean? Well, there's three witnesses to something. And the three witnesses are the Spirit, or the Ruach, the water and the blood. Those are the three witnesses. And the three are in agreement. So they both have the same testimony or witness. What the witness is, okay, what their, what the, what their uh, testimony is that they agree upon is that Yahusha is Yahuwah incarnated. That's what they're witnessing. They're witnessing to the renewed covenant. All right. That Yahuwah, Yahusha was manifested. Yahuwah was manifested as Yahusha and came down and, and, and gave us a renewed covenant. Okay. That's what they're in agreement to. We will receive the witness of men if we receive the witness of men. The witness of Yahuwah is greater. Because this is the witness of Yahuwah, which he has witnessed concerning his Son. The one who believes in the Son of Yahuwah has the witness in himself. The one who does not believe Yahuwah has made him a liar, because he has not believed the witness that Yahuwah has given concerning his Son. And this is the witness that Yahuwah has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son. So his son is the, re the renewed covenant. Through his son, we can enter into the renewed covenant. See that? He who possesses the son possesses life. He was in the new covenant. You possess the son, you were in the new covenant. Because that's who you got to go through to get there. He who does not possess the son of Yahuwah does not possess life. I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of Yahuwah, so that you know that you possess everlasting life, and so that you believe in the name of the Son of Yahuwah. And this is the boldness that we have in him, that if we ask whatever according to his desire, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin, not to death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for those not sinning to death. There is a sin to death. I do not say that he should pray about that. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not to death. We know that everyone having been born of Yahuwah does not sin. But the one having been begotten of Yahuwah guards himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of Yahuwah, 
and all the world lies in the wicked one. And we know that the Son of Yahuwah has come and has given us an understanding so that we might know the true one. And we are in the true one in his Son, Yahusha Mashiach. This is the true Yahuwah and everlasting life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. This is the true Yahuwah, Yahusha HaMashiach. Are you catching that? <clears throat> uh, you have to enter into the renewed covenant, folks, through the water and the blood and the spirit. Okay? You have to, the water and the blood and the spirit is how you get into the renewed covenant. That's through Yahusha HaMashiach. He is the renewed covenant, spiritually. <clears throat> and see, I am coming speedily, and my reward is with me to give to each according to his work. I am the leaf in the ta, beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those doing his commands, so that the authority shall be theirs to the tree of life and to and to enter through the gates into the city. But outside are the dogs. That's the Gentiles or the nations that have not entered the covenant. And those who enchant with drugs. And those who whore. And the murderers and the idolaters. And all who love and do falsehood. Falsehood, 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 falsehood. I, Yahushua, have sent my messenger to witness to you these in the assemblies. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit, or the ruach, and the bride say, Come. And he who hears, let him say, Come. And he who thirsts, come. And he who desires it, take the water of life without pain. So there you have it, folks. It's all about entering into the covenant, the renewed covenant, through the water, the blood, and the spirit, the three witnesses. Okay? I appreciate you watching, and I truly, truly hope that you enter into the renewed covenant, and I see you at the wedding supper of the Lamb. So long, beloved of Yahuwah.
living Torah Baruch Haba Bashem Yahuwah I sing out with praise to with praise to you. My heart desires to honor you, my young. I sing out with praise to you, Yahusha. Baruch Haba Vashem Yahuwah Baruch Haba Vashem Yahuwah Baruch Haba Baruch Haba Baruch Haba